Kaylee McEnany, the former White House press secretary under the Trump administration, was humiliated to the point where she had to delete a tweet where she was trying to blame Joe Biden for the uptick in violent crime in 2020 when he wasn't president yet. So here was the tweet in question. People managed to get a screenshot before she deleted it. The US murder rate under Joe Biden. But if you look at the graph that's embedded in that tweet, it's up until 2020 when there was in fact a pretty dramatic rise in the number of murders in the United States. The only problem is the general election of course took place in November of 2020 and Biden wasn't even inaugurated. Yeah, inaugurated until the next year in 2021. And so she got a lot of heat for that. You know, people were mocking her and making fun of her, and she ended up deleting that tweet. But the statistics in regard to the rise in violent crime is, is interesting. We should have a discussion about that, including what the FBI found regarding the murder rate. But Jake, do you want to jump in first? Yeah, so it's a cell phone, of course, right? And, and the Republicans are funny because they don't think about anything. They're like, you were the White House press secretary in 2020. And you just put that tweet out there saying, look at how horrible things were in 2020. Um, but you know, it's a bit barely, there's never any consequences for Republicans, so it doesn't matter. But you know what? We're not like them, we're actually fair. So I actually don't think it was Trump's fault that crime uh, murder went up that much in 2020. I think it has to do with COVID and a number of other uh, circumstances that were related to that. Um, so they would never do us the same favor and say, well, actually, you know what? Oh, oh, it was Obama's economy that Trump inherited, and and he actually added less jobs than Obama, and the markets and and all of the indicators were actually better under Obama than they were under Trump. They would never say that. They say, oh, Obama was a disaster. Trump was the one that saved the economy, etc. Because they're because they're pathological liars. That's that's who they are. If you meet a Republican, a Republican politician, for sure. Guaranteed, they're lying to you about almost everything they say. But in this case, yeah, it's a cell phone. Trump did it, or it was under the Trump administration. But I, in that case, I don't think it was Trump's fault. Yeah, and by the way, I mean experts who specialize in crime, studying crime, why it happens, they look at the trends. Even they say that there's no one factor that can determine what caused the crime, right? So it's a mix of different factors, which we can get to in just a second. But to give you the number because they are pretty bad. And luckily, the number of murders has actually decreased in 2021. I'll get to that as well. But the United States in 2020 experienced the biggest rise in murder since the start of the national record keeping in 1960. And it's according to data gathered by the FBI for its annual report on crime. The Uniform Crime Report detailed a rise in murder of around 29%. The previous largest one year change was a 12.7% increase in 1968. The national rate murders per 100,000 still remains about one third below the rate in the early 1990s. Look, I was a kid in the 1990s and so it's hard for me to really remember what it was like back then. But crime was bad in the 1990s, like I mean, we all can see, and this is not really something that's only impacting one part of the country. This is a nationwide trend. There has been a rise in crime. And it's it can get a little scary, right? When you think about it, and when you look at the statistics, you look at the numbers, if you have that citizen app on your phone, like it starts to make you a lot more aware of some of the violent crime that takes place. But even now, like when you compare it to the 1990s, it's still not nearly as bad as it was back then. Yeah, 100%. So I. Crime's a really interesting and very difficult thing to track and to figure out what's going wrong. It was, crime was terrible from 1970s to 1990s, and there was so much overreaction to it in all the wrong ways. And the guy who led that overreaction, by the way, was Joe, Joe Biden. Biden. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so he's the author of the uh, the Crime Act, and it was brutal and vicious, and mainly to African Americans and all poor people, including whites, in this country, uh, and. Uh, that, that it turned out and that that was not the issue at all. I read a very persuasive, very surprising article, but they had excellent evidence in there that showed that the most likely culprit for that incredible rise in crime in those decades was lead. The lead paint, lead in the water, lead actually degrades the mind, especially in kids. It causes literal brain damage and 
creates a tendency towards short term thinking and violence. So, and so you're saying, well, why did the crime go down? It had nothing to do with the Crime Act at all. We actually cleaned up the lead. And there's a lot less lead. I know, obviously, still in some place like Flint, Michigan, not just Flint, and unfortunately, in a lot of the water. But overall, we greatly reduced the lead in this country, and you see crime drop right at the as we do that, right? So, hence, that's why it really doesn't have that much to do with presidents. Presidents and, and politicians usually make it worse by applying the wrong solutions. Uh, to, to these uh, problems. But by the way, as a matter of politics, so she screwed this one up, Kayleigh McEnany did, right? But you will see going forward, and we, these predictions are rock solid. No matter what the crime rate is, what the murder rate is, and how it has dropped under Biden from 2020 when Trump was in charge, from now, now on out, you will see Republicans, including in commercials, uh, in 2022, say the crime is up and murder rate is unprecedented. It is terrible, and it's because of Joe Biden's America. Well, it was more under Trump. It doesn't matter. The media never fact checks us properly, so we get a lot of corporate donations and we run these misleading ads and we lie to you over and over. And the media calls it 50/50, and that's how we win elections because of the bribery and the lying. So in terms of the reasons for the uptick in violent crime, the reasons for the rise may never be fully sorted out. It's because it's not really one factor. It's usually a mix of different factors. But analysts have pointed to many possible contributing factors, including various pandemic stresses. So there might be you know, economic reasons for it, economic anxiety, increased distrust between the police and the public after the murder of George Floyd, including a pullback by police. In the response to criticism, and by the way, COVID also led to a pullback from police. Right, police obviously to keep themselves safe, maybe don't do as much in terms of like getting out of their patrol car and investigating certain situations. A lot of cops also got sick with COVID, had to quarantine and stay home from COVID. And then one other thing I want to mention that I don't think gets mentioned enough. Look, I think that some of these. Programs that take place in, you know, underserved communities, programs for youth from lower socioeconomic households. Those programs are so important, right? It's it gives them opportunities. It it, it keeps them together with members of their community. And COVID has had a huge mental impact on everyone, but certainly for for young men who really enjoyed those programs and felt camaraderie with people in their community through those programs. They don't have those programs anymore, right? Those got scrapped as people had shutdowns and stay at home orders. So I'm gonna say one last thing. I had this great interview with Kay Bain. You should check it out on the conversation. And he helped lead a program in New York where they went to a couple of projects, including the largest one. And they did a completely different kind of community policing where they didn't brutalize the local population. Instead, they built up trust and relationships. And it had stunning success. Wow, it sounds crazy. Yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah, and when they did mediation and when they did all of these reasonable things, crime absolutely plummeted. It was shocking how well it worked. God forbid we should try things that actually work nationwide. Nope, that program will probably get buried and nobody will ever talk about it again. And instead Republicans will run those ads and then Democrats will cower and then they'll all pass, get tough on crime legislation because that's how dumb politics is and, and that's how our country's run. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.